All right, so what I have here is the cosine of x divided by 1 plus sine of x plus 1 plus sine of x divided by cosine of x. All right. If I was going to think about this in um, elementary terms, I could say, well, these are two different terms. These are two different terms, but they're kind of like the reciprocal of each other, right? So let's just pretend it was something like this. This is a much easier example. <coughs> this is a much easier uh, example, but this kind of represents the same thing with regular numbers, right? Right? So whenever I get confused, I always like to kind of think about this and maybe just easier numbers that I could do with this. I know these are bino a binomial and stuff like that, but let's just look at what would I do if I had said, asked you to add 4 thirds plus 3 fourths. Well, remember when adding fractions, you have to have the same denominator. So what I'll do to get the same denominator is I find the least common multiple between the denominators, which ends up being 12. That means I need to multiply this fraction by 4 over 4 and this fraction by 3 over 3. Therefore, I obtain 16 over 12 plus 9 over 12. Now that I have them in the same, with the same denominator, I can combine them to give me 25 over 12. We're all good on that, right? Okay. So now we're going to get into more difficult. So that was with the numbers, what we need to do. <clears throat> so now, ladies and gentlemen, we look at these and we say, all right, these do not have the same denominators, right? So I need to create the exact same denominator. So again, just like I did with the numbers, I need to find the least common multiple. Well, it's a little bit more difficult finding the least common multiple. But what I know is if I multiply each denominator by the other one, I will have a common multiple, right? So let's multiply this side by cosine of x. And then this side, I'm going to multiply by 1 plus sine of x, because that's the whole denominator. OK, so then what I get is cosine squared of x plus, here's a binomial. Uh, so it's going to be 1 squared plus 2 sine of x plus sine of x squared. Remember, this is not a difference of two squares. This is a perfect, um, a perfect square bi uh, binomial. So you're going to write it as a perfect square trinomial. Then all of this is over our common denominator, which is cosine of x times 1 plus sine of x. Now, I'll give you guys a little hint. Um, you could you know, distribute this through, but a lot of times, remember, we're trying to simplify. So a lot of times, we're going to try to divide out into 1. So a lot of times, sometimes it's easier to, rather than multiplying all the way through, like, kind of leave it out so you can see maybe if you might be able to divide some terms out. All right, so by looking at this now, I notice that I have a cosine squared plus a sine squared. I know that cosine squared plus sine squared equals Pythagorean identity. Sine squared plus cosine squared of x equals 1. So therefore, this term is being added to this term, which adds up to 1. So I can now say I have, so now I'm really just adding 1. Right? Those two terms really just equal 1. So now I have 1 plus, all right, so let's just rewrite it. So now I have 2 plus 2 sine of x divided by cosine of x times 1 plus sine of x. And then thinking about the simplifying terms, I can see, oh, well, I can factor out a 2 on the top. So therefore, I have 2 times 1 plus sine of x divided by cosine of x times 1 plus sine of x. Then these two terms are exactly the same, so they are going to divide to 1. And I'm left with 2 over cosine, which is 2 secant of x. Is that what you have in the back of the book? Well, what I thought was 2 cosine x over cosine squared of x, which I think Well, I don't know. I have to go and look at your work, but do you know if what the back? OK. All right. Well, there you go. So we can go and look at your work and see where you changed, you know, or whatever.